everyone, welcome back. In this episode of Build This Biz, we're gonna create this waterfall chart. And waterfall charts require one measure and one dimension, and maybe an extra uh, measure to size the bars and a, a third measure slash dimension uh, to add the color. So the, technically three measures and, and also maybe a fourth uh, if we want to add some pizzazz, which we are definitely going to do. So four measures and a dimension, but really one measure when it comes down to it. And we'll be doing that using Tableau Superstore data set. Our one measure is going to be profit and our dimensions are going to be subcategory. And I'm going to hop into Tableau and what you'll see right here is what we're trying to create, a waterfall chart by subcategory. We've got three subcategories, bookcases, storage, and supplies that are all negative profit. And we'll build this cascading waterfall that ends with our grand total. How do we do it? Well, let's create a new sheet and start from scratch. I'm going to click on subcategory and bring subcategory up in to columns. I'm just going to change my view so it fits the entire view. I'm going to right click on my axis and I'm going to rotate my label as well just so that we can see those labels as they come through. Now I could start by adding profit here um, to my, my rows, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to create a new calculated field and we'll use that calculation to sort of build out our entire visualization. And we're just going to call this total total profit for now. But our total profit calculation is actually going to be the start of each of our bars that we're going to create. The bars, uh, right, if we're going to use a Gantt chart, so let's change it to Gantt. But if we're going to use a bar, we're basically going to identify the start of our Gantt bar, and then we'll use a size of, in this case, profit to size out uh, our bars. And we'll do that with profit. So we'll start by just in our calculation typing some of profit. If I hit apply and I take total profit now and just bring that out on rows, we'll sort of see what are the essentially the endpoints of each of these bars, the top and the bottom of the bars. Uh, if they operated independently, they would represent where those locations would be. Uh, we sort of want to be able to, instead of getting this value, look at the previous value. So uh, accessories should actually start at zero. So we're going to somehow get that to zero. But appliances mark should start where the accessories value ends. So we can do this by typing lookup minus one. And if I hit apply, this now will look up the previous value. And not only do we want to look up the previous value, but we want to do a running total of those. So I'm just going to add another layer of calculation in here to say running sum and I'll add that in and I'll hit apply and we'll now see marks that sort of mimic exactly what we're looking for. This running sum going throughout the entire visualization. We can cross check it really quickly by double clicking on the marks card and typing sum of profit. We're going to build an ad hoc calculation and just place that on size and we'll see sure enough all the bars show up with the exception of the accessories. Why isn't it showing up? Well, we don't have a, a mark to start it because our lookup is going to return a null value. So the easiest solution here is just to wrap this entire thing in ZN. Technically, we'd want to put the ZN somewhere inside or after the lookup function, but we're returning exactly what we want here. We have now ourselves a waterfall chart with this one calculation. We're done. This is the, the hard part. So total pro profit just note this calculation. In fact, let's just do a copy of it uh, and we'll save it for a second because we're going to add it when we're doing some pizzazz to our visualization. Now for this next calculation, we're just going to create a new calculated field and we're going to color each of the, the, the bars, whether it's positive or negative. And the way we'll do that is we're going to use the string calculation and we're going to use the sign function inside the string calculation and then we're going to do sum of profit. So if the profit is positive, it will return a string of one. And if the profit is negative, it will return a string of negative one. And then we're just going to call this a profit color. I'm going to hit OK. And now we can take profit color and add that to color. And we'll see our positive and negative values coming through. You can 
size your bar at this point and make it whatever size you're looking for. Uh, whether you want large bars, small bars that will sort of get the visualization that you're looking for. Maybe we'll change this negative value to red while we're at it. Um, however, I would say, you know, for the most part, it's going to be really hard to have your eye track from one value to the next. What might, might be great is a horizontal line that combines the two together. That would be really great. Well, we can do that. Um, frankly, we can do it a couple of ways, and we're going to show you each way. But first, let's make this bar uh, moderately larger. Oh, and we forgot to add some, some more information in here. Let's make sure that our waterfall chart actually finishes with our totals. So I'm just going to go to Analysis and select Show Grand Row Totals. That's going to give me my Grand Row total showing up now on my visualization. And like I said, the last part here is how do we connect all these values together? Well, we can do it with a dual axis chart, and that's what we're going to build. Uh, we're going to build three versions of it. So if, if you've gotten to this point and you've got your waterfall chart, the rest, it's all gravy. It's all added design technique to make the waterfall chart look a little bit nicer. The first thing that you could do is, for, let's create a new calculated field, by the way, and we're going to essentially add a line that connects all these bars together. Just paste in your previous calculation, so that's zero null, running sum, lookup, sum of profit, minus one. All of those components going in. Instead of having minus one, just put in zero. In fact, you really don't need to put in zero. We could get rid of it, and we could just have a running sum of the sum of profit, and then ZN for good case, in case we have some null values running through. And then we could just call this the total sales, or sorry, total profit uh, running. And it's okay, whatever we call this. Um, this calculation is going to be used a couple of different ways. I'm just going to click and drag this calculation to the left of our total profit calculation that we created previously. And I'll place it there and we're going to make this into a dual axis. But before I do so, I'm going to change my mark type here to a line and I'm going to get rid of size. I'll also get rid of color. And I'm going to change my mark type on path from a line to either a step or a jump. In this case, I'm going to use jump. Now I can change my size, make that line a little bit thinner, and then let's make a dual axis chart. Right click on total profit, choose dual axis, right click, and synchronize our axes as well. And what you'll notice is we now have a line connecting those bars together no problem. I actually like using this one when I'm building it fast. Uh, it is a very easy way to connect the bars without any issues. That said, um, if I choose to make this bar size a little bit smaller, maybe that gray line, that, that step, that connector is just too thick for me. I want to use a different line type. Another way that we can do this is by uh, you know, I'm going to essentially reset, show you a second way on how to do this. We're going to still keep our total profit calculation that we just created, that running one, uh, but I'm going to remove it for the time being. The second way that we could do this is we could use measure names and measure values to create uh, a, a bar that, that sort of goes above and below these lines, and then we can connect each of these bars together. So how do we do that? We'll start by finding measure names and measure values, dragging measure values out on rows. We're not going to panic for the time being. We're just going to take sales, basically all our calculations, and make sure that only total profit and running profit are on our view here. And we're going to get rid of sizing. We're going to get rid of color. And we essentially will have two ticks. I want that, that those ticks to be as small as possible, so I'm just going to double click and create an ad hoc calculation, min 0.0, and what you'll find, or sorry, min 1.0, really small lines, and then place that on size. So you'll see my lines just got just a touch, touch smaller. From here, I now can just do a dual axis chart, so right click, choose dual axis, and let's sync these up. And what do we get? Well, it's hard to see right now, 
But if we change the size of our bars, we'll now see that we have this bar that sort of acts as a guide. And if I wanted to drag it all the way across or maybe change the color, um, I could do that as well. And let's try that again, change the color here. And now we have these bars that are, uh, you know, going across the entire view. And if I do resize these bars, they sort of add that nice way to connect every single value across all, all of my Gantt bars. This is two ways. Again, another great way, I have these extra long lines. If you wanted to do a dashed line, it's not possible. So I've been asked in the past, Luke, you know what? I love the connectors. I love how it looks right now, but can I make it a, can I make it a dashed line, a dotted line? And the answer is yes. We just have to go about it a third different way. So again, all of this gravy, all of it extra, let's show you that third way. I'm gonna remove measure values from my view now, and then we're just going to go find that calculation that we created for profit, that running calculation. We're gonna add it to detail. Then we're gonna right click on the axis and we're gonna add two reference lines, one for total profit and one for the total profit running, that calculation that essentially acts as the baseline and connects it all together. So I'm gonna say per cell, give me no label, no tool tip. Let's change the line to dashed and I'll make it a little bit lighter as well. Uh, maybe I'll just make it dark so that you can see it, but I would never make it this dark in real life. And then I'm gonna uncheck show recalculated line. I'll hit okay. And I'm gonna repeat the exact same process for the other calculations. So add another reference line. The first one I used was total profit, which is what we have on rows. Now I'm gonna use that running calculation again per cell. I'm gonna take away our labels. I'm gonna take away our tool tip. Um, um, let me try that again. I think what I just did was I edited the calculation, making sure that I'm adding a reference line. So I have two of them. Now let's try that again. We'll say per cell. Let's say no value, no tool tip, a thin dashed line, no recalculation. And there it is, a dashed line. So we have three options for upping our waterfall chart, which is number one, you can just use a line on a dual axis. Number two, you can use measure names, measure values to create two axes that you can resize. And then three, you can, for the dashed lines, use two reference lines accordingly. And then the last step, of course, would be to add labels, which you can do very quickly by just taking some of profit and adding that to labels. And if you wanted to, you could, uh, in this case, rotate the labels upward and you would have those totals for each bar going by subcategory. Before we wrap up, I've got to ask you a question. Which of the three extra types did you like? The first type where we used a dual axis with a line, the second type where we did a dual axis with measure values, measure names, or did you like the third option using reference lines? Leave a comment down below. Let me know which your favorite was. If you enjoy this video, be sure to like it. And if you are enjoying this series, be sure to subscribe so that every time we get come out with a new video, it's hitting your inbox. Anyway, that's this video and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks again.